<laughs> I'm back again. But anyway, um, so this is part two of beginning your relationship with God. So uh, I just want to give you a few tips uh, that that the Lord really taught me along the way. Uh, beginning, you know, with beginning your relationship. I'm not saying that I'm a a veteran saint or this, that, and the other. Uh, just just the Lord has really taught me things, which is why I'm making these videos. See what I'm saying? So, um, and these are things that I can truly share uh, with people. And um, but anyway, uh, one of the things that that He taught me was when you come to Him. Um, trying to develop a relationship don't necessarily try and fix yourself right and come to him just come to him and he will take care of everything he will take care of all things right and um i've been guilty of that in the past and i think that one of the reasons why he wants you to uh literally just come to him out of a heart that is literally just wanting to know him versus wanting to know his knowledge. And I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, it's simply because he is the one that is the provoker of all change. He is the one that will consecrate you. The word will literally consecrate you, will, will literally sanctify you, will literally break every chain because it is sharper than any two edged sword dividing soul and spirit. And putting you in alignment with what God has for you. Right. So with that said, along on that journey. So basically what happened was I broke up with my girlfriend after, um, just like I said, at the end of the last video, broke up with her. And um, I tried. I, I didn't mention this, uh, but I literally tried to go out on a date. I got on a dating site and um, and I tried to go out on a date. Well, basically what happened was I did go out on a date and um, and it almost it could have gotten sexual. But the thing was, it was just kind of like I was at a, I was at a place where I could literally stop living that lifestyle. And I know for for anybody who is has truly been into a promiscuous lifestyle, they know exactly what I mean. Because there are there are specific time periods, and um, and I believe wholeheartedly that God has something to do with it, where you don't necessarily feel held hostage to a specific cycle that you're in, a cycle of addiction. And during that time period, you have a choice whether you want to jump back into it, or whether you want to fill it up with something else. Well, I didn't recognize this, and so I literally tried to touch the girl. I was touching her, and. And, and like I said before, guys, I mean, I'm I'm very vulnerable. I'm very open about, you know, my past because I openness, honesty and vulnerability is what what sets people free. But if all of these Christians, if uh, uh, if all of us as disciples and followers of Christ, right, if all of us literally sit here and act like, oh, you know, I got saved. And so now I'm perfect. I'm, you know, I'm going to walk around and act like I don't sin or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk around and act like, you know, this, that and the other. Then people who aren't saved, people who don't have a relationship with God. When they do, they think that, that that's what it's about. It's OK to put on this little facade. It's OK to pretend. No, it's not OK. It's not OK. It's not OK at all, because. You're, you're putting up a barrier and keeping yourself exactly the way that you are when, when the Lord wants us to grow in him. A lot of us as Christians will, will come to God. We'll have all of this heavenly glory that, that is given to us, but we just stand at the door. It's just okay to have the title of being Christian. You know, that's okay. It, it's all good now. It's not good. But anyway, during that... Um, what what happened uh, was I just needed to touch on that. Well, basically what happened was um, I'm touching on it and I just couldn't feel anything. There was no sexual desire. And um, after that, she was trying to come into my house and I said, no, you know, it's OK. I, I think I'm all right. And that's the first night I called my brother immediately. I said, man, I feel like I, I can actually quit now. I didn't realize later that. 
I was in a cycle of demonic activity. And one of those cycles also had to do with pornography. If I wasn't having sex and having an orgasm, if I wasn't watching porn and masturbating, then I could not go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep. And, um, and it was like that for years. As a child, I was molested by my cousin. And, um, you know, I, I'll delve into that in, in another video. But uh, I forgave her. But that really uh, messed up my image of a woman. I began to objectify them, even as a young age, um, at a young age. There were, there were children that were, uh, in. I remember being in first grade, um, the teacher, all of the kids, you know, eating uh, crackers and, and, and cheese and, and, and stuff and, uh, uh, for, for story time in first grade. And um, the teacher would sit up in front of us and while we were snacking and stuff, everybody else is just having a good old time, you know, listening to the story. But I'm trying to look up my teacher's skirt. I'm trying to look up her dress. I'm trying to, you know, see specific sexual things because that's, I was introduced to it. It, it was happening so much to me that um, I began to actually like it. I was enjoying it. And um, yeah, my parents don't even know that, but they, they will now. Um, but it's okay though, because it's not, it's not, I'm not trying to glorify me. It's not about me. It's about God and him setting me free. And so I'm going to tell you the full story. So basically, there was one day, 2017, by this time I had, I had read the word at least once, one time and a half or, or twice by this time. And so my relationship with God was getting really strong. And, um, and, but I was still masturbating. I was still masturbating. I, I was, I had a girlfriend and I was, I was still having sex at the time. And I, I this is a different girlfriend at the time. And I'm, I'm still having sex. I didn't try to change myself, but yet and still, every time that I would sin now, now when I would sin, it would hurt. I would feel dirty. It would hurt me. I would have to go on a fast that like, it would just hurt me so much. And, um, but I hadn't learned how to yet step into that identity. And in some ways I still struggle with who I am in my identity. I, my divine identity. And I'll touch on that in another video. But uh, basically what happened was I masturbated this one day. I believe it was January 17th of 2017. No. Yeah. It was January 17th. And uh, after I got done masturbating and watching porn, I looked up and I just started crying after 15 years, wait, no, yeah, about 15 years of masturbating because I started when I was 12, 15 years of masturbating, I literally felt dirty. I felt like trash. And I called up to God and I said, Lord, send me help. Please help me. Send me help. And I'm crying. I'm crying. I didn't know what to expect. But I just prayed that throughout the entire day over and over. Sometimes tears were in my eyes. Other times I didn't have any more tears to cry. And, um, and I'm, I was sitting right here where I'm sitting right now. And I'm crying out to God. I'm just crying. I didn't know what to do. The next morning, I jumped out of bed. I jumped out of bed. And I was like, man, you know, usually I'm, I'm really tired, but it was like this energy was just pulsating through me. I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to control it. I, I, I mean, I was just so joyful. I was just, it felt like I was free. And I just kept asking God. I was like, Lord, like, what did you do? And I'm yelling at him. I'm, I'm crying. I'm so excited. I'm laughing in the shower. I mean, I didn't know what to do. I was excited. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and that night in my Bible reading plan, keep in mind, throughout the whole day, I'm asking him, what did you do? What did you do? And uh, that night in my Bible reading plan, 
it's said to read Psalms 34, 17. And in that, that was him answering my, my question. Because Psalms 34, 17 says, when the righteous cry out for help, he hears their cries and delivers them from their distresses. And in that moment, I, I, I learned that God responds to desperation. When you are desperate to be free, when you get so tired of yourself, when you get so tired of your circumstances, when you get so tired of the way of life that you have conformed to living to or to living in, that, that is when God responds. Because any time before, it's just like, oh, Lord, just do this. Amen. Okay, I understand that. But the Lord said that a fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. A lot of times, us as Christians and even a lot of unbelievers, we don't pray fervently unless something bad is happening in our life. That's the only time we cry out to God. And even in my life, I'm not perfect. The only, and the only reason that I can talk about these specific things is because I've lived them. You know what I mean? Um, but what if we live in an atmosphere where we make God literally who he is as, as our father? Where we make our relationship with him so real to the point where any time that we pray for something, we recognize when it's being answered. What if we live in a place of not my will, but your will be done, Lord? What if we live in a place of humility at all times? So basically what I'm saying here is one of the main things that he's taught me is don't try to change yourself because you can't change yourself. You can't change yourself. Maybe on the outside, yes. And maybe, maybe, maybe with your willpower, yes. But in moving in the greater things of God, no. You can't. You can't. And coming to that realization is very humbling. But then... It takes a lot of trust as well. But once you begin to uh, gain that relationship, you will understand that he will never, ever let you down. So the main lesson here is don't try to change yourself when you begin that journey. Just let him do it. Continue living life as normal, just like you did before. But the thing is, the only difference is spend time with the Lord. Just add him into your life. And he will change everything. Before I was I was running out there trying to find sex or running out there trying to get women. Before I knew it, I was trying to run back home, trying to read more of the word. You see how it flip flopped. He changed me from the inside out and the full expression of that. Showed outwardly. Y'all be blessed. Be sanctified. Disciples, stand up, man. Fight for what you believe in.